Happy Friday! Super excited today to talk about gratitude. Gratitude, gratitude. It's all about your attitude, right my friends? So, if you don't know who I am, I'm Sarah, and I am a mom of three, and I just have a passion for living my very best life. For so long, I was really stuck in this kind of like hamster wheel of motherhood. It was Groundhog Day every single day, and I just felt lost and overwhelmed and unhappy. I loved being home with my babies. I loved being a mom, but I felt unhappy with who I was. Like, I lost my identity, and so I started to work on myself. I had started to work on my fitness, right? And I finally figured out that you can't have any traction in your fitness unless you change, until you change your mind. And so I'm on a quest to change my mind. I'm on a chest, I'm on a quest to change, not my chest, but my life. Like that's what it's all about, right? It's just getting better every single day. So I pop in here every Friday. It's a standing date. I hope you join me more. Bring your coffee or your Bloody Mary or tea or whatever is your beverage of choice. And dig into this with me. So gratitude is something I've been thinking a lot about lately because my kids feel, they just feel like super ungrateful. And maybe they're just kids, you know, but like it's always like, I want a toy. And every time we go to the store, I want a toy. Give me, give me, give me. And then as they're ripping into their like blind bag or whatever, they're already on to the next thing. And they're already talking about next Christmas and next birthday. And I'm like, whoa, like just slow down. And so then it made me step back and I'm like, well, is that my attitude? Like, am I, do I have a lack of gratitude? Is it constantly needing to fill the void with things? And lately we've had a lot of personal setbacks, not setbacks, but we've just been kind of treading water a little bit in our, in our personal lives. My husband and I, like, you know, we're ready for an adventure and it's funny how you can be so ready for an adventure, but it, sometimes you just kind of can't take one. Like if, you know, jobs are in certain places and so you're in a holding pattern and this is a lesson that we both need to get better at learning, <laughs> that it's all about just having patience and finding the gratitude, finding all the things there is to be joyful and grateful for because we are so freaking blessed. So this day and age, I feel like we can all use more gratitude um, and it's a choice. It's a choice, it's something that you can totally train yourself to do. And so I'm gonna kind of dig into all that with you guys today. So gratitude. Oh, I found, I found a couple of quotes. You know I did. Quotes that really spoke to me about this. So life will bring you pain all by itself. Your responsibility is to create joy. Isn't that powerful? It's so true because things are going to keep happening. You can't really control circumstances that happen, but you control how you react, how you respond, and how you go out into this world. Truth. You're not just a victim, my friends. You are a victor. You can do hard things. Totally. There's a weird shadow on my face. I don't know what's happening. So I'm having a Michael Jackson moment. Anyways, okay. Um, if And the other quote I write down is if you've forgot, oh, this was good. If you've forgotten the language of gratitude, you will never be speaking on terms with happiness. So if you're just feeling stuck, if you're feeling really unhappy, well, congratulations, you're probably human, right? We all have those moments and I'm not shaming you. I'm not telling you there's something wrong with you because I have them too. And for so long, I was so stuck in this like, I was stuck in my stock. I was I was focusing on that and that's where all of my like thought patterns were going. Like I'm so stuck, I'm so behind. I, these kids won't let me pee in peace. Like I was always something that I was choosing to focus on. But I got to I finally figured out I had to shift my focus. Okay, so studies have shown that people who have gratitude in their lives are in touch with their gratitude, have a lower degree of depression because they're looking for the good. It's a mind shift change that you can totally make, okay? So, and everyone wants to be happy and fulfilled, and the solution to that is gratitude. So, how do you get it, right? What is gratitude? What does gratitude do? Gratitude lifts your mood, and it boosts your motivation. I hear that a lot. I just need to get motivated. Okay, well, here's a great, here's the first step then. Let's focus on gratitude, and I'm gonna give you some steps on how to like dig into that and get better at it, because it's a practice. It's not something that you just wake up one day and you're like, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for everything. No, it, it's a mind shift, mind shift change and you have to work on it, right? Just like your fitness, just like your budget, like your relationships is something that you're always working on, but it's going to multiply tenfold. and so freaking exciting and explosive once you finally tap into it. I think I'm going to move over here. Maybe it's just, there we go. There, now my nose is back. Oh, it's exciting. Okay. Um, so gratitude puts situations into perspective and this has been really big for me lately with us like not getting a move or whatever right it puts everything in perspective the things that we are complaining about the things that we're spending our time like 
woe is me about, really, if you step back and you look for the gratitude in them, it's going to shift your whole perspective. It's going to shift your whole outlook. And when you start to look for the good, you start to see more good and more good is attracted to you. And it's freaking amazing. It's this total kumbaya moment. Should we all like hold hands and sing? Um, gratitude makes us happier. Gratitude helps us realize what we have. Truth. Um, it helps you find the things in your life that you want to put more energy to. That was a really big one for me. Is like once you start, start taking some time to figure out what you're grateful for and looking for your gratitude, it helps you kind of like pinpoint some things. It helps you kind of shift your focus because sometimes we're all like we're spinning our wheels and we're putting a lot of energy into things that maybe aren't in our best interest. Like maybe they don't grow us as a person. Maybe they're just not. They're not, they're not cultivating your best life, right? Okay, so how do you cultivate gratitude? Like, how do you freaking get it? I have, keep hearing about how, how you just have to like, well, first off, step number one is it's intentional. You have to choose it. And so you can choose it by pausing wherever you're at. And you can like look around, take in your surroundings, spend some time in nature, play with your kids. Like there's always something to be grateful for. We hear this a lot thrown around, but it's so freaking true. So Look around at your surroundings. I, when I was early, early in motherhood and I felt overwhelmed and like all the kids were home and hubby would come home, you know, how you meet them at the door and you're like, here, take the child. I just need a few minutes. Right. And so I would put on my tennis shoes and I would go for a gratitude run. I'm going to call it a run, even though I might've only ran to the end of the block before I was gasping for air, but I was grateful for that air. And so I would just go for a really fast walk and I would, I would gratitude puke, not literally, but I would Tell myself, I'm not going to focus on any of the things happening in my life. I'm not going to sit here and complain. I am going to, the only thoughts I'm going to allow myself to have intentionally are gratitude ones. I'm grateful for my shoes. I'm grateful that he's home. I'm grateful I'm out of the house. I'm grateful for this day. I'm grateful for the parking lot right there with all those amazing cars. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my deodorant. Like I'm grateful for any, like the smallest thing I would just... That was my focus, and I would do these gratitude runs, gratitude runs, and they helped me so much, and it kind of, it kind of helped me shift my focus initially. That was the first kind of introduction to gratitude I had. I kept hearing everyone, Oprah, everyone's always talking about gratitude, how we have to have it, how it's something, it's a practice, and so that was what I started doing. So I'm going to encourage you to do that today, too. Like, if you are going to move your body, which hopefully you do, because I really do believe that helps you find the good in things, right? It gets your energy going. It helps you just like get your blood pumping and it's easy to look for the good. So if you are not enjoying your workouts and you tend to like get on the tread, the treadmill or whatever, and you're like, I hate this, this hurts so bad. Well then that's, it is going to hurt so bad and it is going to suck and you are going to hate it. But you can tell yourself, no, I'm not going to have those negative thoughts. I'm going to retrain my brain. I'm going to recondition myself. And so I'm going to be like, I'm grateful that I can move my legs. I am grateful that I am here on this amazing earth and that I, can, I have the ability to sweat and to be uncomfortable. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for my workout shorts, even if they're riding up your butt. I'm grateful for whatever. Just insert everything in anything. Nothing is too small. It all matters. It all adds up. And when you start looking for the good, it's going to domino into other areas of your life. So step number one is to be intentional and to actually choose it, to make the decision that you're going to look for the gratitude. You're going to look for the good because it's a choice. It's a choice you have to make. You're not just going to magically wake up and be like, I'm feeling grateful today. No, it's a choice. Okay. So hop on my train and choose gratitude. Number two is to keep a journal. I keep hearing this. I keep reading it in all my like personal development to have a gratitude journal. I have yet to do it. So I think I'm going to start that today. Do you want to join me? If you're going to join me, I want to know, drop it below, leave me a comment or a crazy emoji or something just so I know that you're with me because I think this can be really powerful. I know this can be powerful and I'm excited to implement it. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be wild. It could be a notepad. It could be your phone. You don't even have to keep a journal. Although I think if you do, it would be something really cool to look back on and see how your process has evolved, how you as a person are growing. And it's one of those things that you can pass down to your kids and there's nothing too hairy or crazy in it, right? It's a gratitude journal. So they say, Write down three things every night. You could do it in the morning if you're more of a morning person. But I think probably if you're struggling with sleep, it would be a really good thing, you know, to kind of reshift your focus as you're relaxing into bed. It's like the things you're grateful for. Three things. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It doesn't have to be some crazy event. It could be, I'm grateful for my clean sheets. 
I'm grateful I took a shower. I'm grateful for hot water. I'm grateful that it is bedtime. I'm grateful that I can have coffee in the morning. It doesn't have to be super deep. It's just practicing gratitude, okay? That's number two, keep a journal. Number three is to retrain your mind because it's a choice. This is all a choice that you have to make. So re retraining your mind is centering around reframing negative thoughts. We all have negative thoughts. I was the queen of negativity. We joked that I had an ice pick that I would take out to like stab my husband's dreams, uh, which I didn't really like that. It was kind of funny. We giggled at it, but it was true. I was super negative and super unhappy and I used sarcasm as my humor, but it wasn't really funny and I wasn't really happy and I wasn't trying to be like silly. I was just an asshole. So I changed all of that by doing personal development and by focusing on gratitude. Okay, so if you are interacting with someone and your first thought is maybe something that's not very kind, don't shame yourself for that because let's be real, we all have unkind thoughts, it's just part of being human. But you get to choose whether or not you continue that thought or whether or not you flip that thought. So maybe you go to the grocery store and the checker is really unpleasant and not nice. Instead of like, it'd be normal for us to be like, what, what a bitch, like what's her, what's her problem? Like, I can't believe I came here and got this terrible service. Like you could go on this rant or you could flip it and be like, you know what? I'm grateful that there was someone here to check my groceries and maybe she's having a really hard day. Like maybe, maybe someone's died in her life. Maybe she's really sad. Kind of puts things in perspective. You don't always have to you're going to have negative thoughts still. I still do too, but I have, it's a choice that you make whether or not you're going to give into those or whether or not you're going to focus on the good. You're going to flip it. And so as you start, it's a practice. You're going to suck at it at first. It's okay. I'm giving you permission, but the more you practice, the better it's going to get, the more smoothly and the less frequently you're going to notice you have to shift it. It's going to become automatic. You kind of fake it until you make it right. My friends. So one of the other ways to do this, Wait, this is my next step. It's not the other way. Step number four <laughs> is to give a compliment. This is so awesome. So my personal motto, one of them, is to sprinkle kindness like confetti, right? Because everyone out there is fighting a battle. We don't always know what it is. Whatever, right? But you you go around and you give genuine compliments. Don't 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 blow smoke up people's butts. Don't do that. But give someone a genuine compliment. You are going to a feel so much better about yourself, I guarantee it, and B, you're gonna make that person's day. Maybe no one has said anything nice to that person. Maybe that checker that wasn't very friendly to you just had a whole bunch of snowbirds that were really mean to them. If you give them a compliment, if you say give them a little piece of kindness, it could shift their whole day. It could completely change their life. You could be the person that's instrumental in like a domino effect of amazingness. So be the domino that is amazing, okay? and. The, this is a two-sided thing, right? So you're going to be blessing someone else with a compliment. You're going to be making them feel good as well. And it's going to make you feel good about yourself on the inside. But if you go out into life like that and that's your goal that you want to go around giving compliments, it's going to shift your focus. You're no longer going to be looking critically and looking negatively at things that are happening, but you're going to go out like, okay, this is my goal. I want to bless people genuinely with compliments. And so you're going to be looking for the good. It's part of reconditioning yourself in your mind which a lot of us have really negative minds. So this is like so freaking huge in changing your life. And so I try and do that a lot. I try and send people compliments, not because I want something from them. No, but just because I know it's going to bless them. And in the end, in the end result of that it will bless me too, because it's a boomerang. Like you're going to get out, you're going to get back what you put out in this life. And if you're just like putting out, you know, gross juju, well then that's what you're going to get back. Okay, so I liked this one. Um, it was this tip, my tip number five. And it's like, as you're doing something that you do every day, like maybe it's your shower, maybe it's your brushing your teeth, flossing your teeth, whatever. Um, <laughs> please floss. Um, you are going to say three things you like about yourself. And this might be really hard. I haven't done this one. I was just, when I was researching, like, because this is my focus this month, is gratitude. So I'm like, I want to get better at gratitude. I want to teach my kids more about gratitude. This shouldn't just be something we take out and polish Thanksgiving, which I think a lot of us do, right? It's like, oh, it's Thanksgiving, time to be thankful. No, it shouldn't just be like limited to November. We can be thankful all year long because the more thankfulness and gratitude and appreciation you have in your life, the better your life is going to be. This is going to directly benefit you. It's not for anyone else's benefit. It's to rock your freaking life. So... This is one thing I'm going to implement today. Three things, 
that you like about yourself. And maybe that's too much of a stretch. Just like maybe in the journal, the gratitude journal, coming up with three things is too much of a stretch for you. Well, then start with one. That's okay. Start with one and be like, you know what? I like, I like that I'm a good friend or I like my toenails. Like, I don't know. Whatever it is you like about yourself. It does not have to be deep and profound. I'm not asking you to spend hours. Just something. I'm having a good hair day. I don't have a pimple. Like whatever it is, just something that you like about yourself. It can be superficial. It can be deep whatever, but you're going to start telling yourself that because it's not just about filling other people's cups. You have to fill your own cup as well. And it's just going to help you with your self-esteem. It's going to help you with your self-talk, which is so freaking important. If your self-talk is right on, it's going to be much easier for you to find gratitude. And how do I work on my self-talk? Affirmations. You know it. I talk about it. I preach it. I love it. Affirmations will change your life. And this is a great way to like link these together. You know what? I'm a good friend. I can do today. I can, I'm going to take the action needed to change my life. I am done being stuck. I am moving forward. I am favored. There's amazing things that are going to happen today. I do this every single morning. I do. And a couple of you on here, I say affirmations about you. I visualize you having an amazing day. That sounds totally weird. And I promise you I'm not stalking you, peering in your windows. But it's just true. There's certain people that... God puts in our lives. I'm a huge believer in that. Like people don't come into your lives by chance. I feel that everyone that you need to know is going to be brought to you. Whether or not you connect with them in a genuine, authentic way that benefits everyone, well, that's on you. If you stay in your little comfort zone and you're only thinking negative thoughts and you're not finding gratitude in life, well, then all those amazing events will never unwrap, uh, will never present themselves, right? So this is part of the whole process, living your best freaking life and rocking the heck out of it. Okay, so number, what number is this? This is number six. Ooh, ooh, okay, this is about protecting your energy and your circle. So there's that saying that you are a reflection of the five people you associate with the most is super duper true. And Joel Osteen has, he talks about this too. I, I was just listening to something the other day. He was talking about how, you know, you don't want to like hang out with chickens. Like you're not going to walk around with chickens. You want to fly with eagles. What does that mean? It means you want to be with people who are excited about life. You want to be with people who are looking for the good. You want to be with people who are happy, don't you? Do you want to hang out with people who just like hang around and complain and look for the bad? No, you don't. You want to grow and stretch, hopefully, and get better at life. You want to teach your kids those things, okay? So the people that you are associating with, the people that you're letting into your circle, it really does matter. And sometimes it's hard because family can be really negative and we have... We have patterns and habits that have been established for a long time. And it takes a lot of work and sometimes some therapy to work through that and figure out how to create a new dynamic with them so that it, you know, you can, it's just, it can be really hard. It can be really hard, but your friendships, stuff like that, you have a choice in that. The people you associate with most are a reflection of you and you will become a reflection of them as well. So something to think about, um, if, so when you get together with girlfriends, if all you do is complain gossip, if it's all about negativity, it's not going to grow you as a person. It's not going to make you feel better. It's not going to help you find gratitude. So this is the perfect opportunity to make a conscious decision that if you're not going to change your circle, you're going to change how you interact with that circle. And you're not going to give all, you're not going to give energy to all the gossip and stuff like that. You, you're the driver of your own bus. I'd say this all the time. One of the very first books I read was The Energy Bus by John Gordon. And if you haven't heard of it or you haven't read it, please get it. It's awesome. I listened to it on audiobook. I got it at the library and we listened to it in my car. The kids in the time at that time were on the bus. So every day we would drive to school and we would listen to the energy bus and they loved it. They learned from it too. And we still quote it. We're not whiners, we're winners. <laughs> and there's things that they talk in there about energy vampires and how it's so important to set up your boundaries and to still be kind to those people, but to not let them in. If someone is a toxic person for you, don't be a victim protect your space, make the boundaries you need to make and shift things. Okay. You got to, that's up to you, my friends. So energy bus by John Gordon is a terrific read. He's got a whole bunch of other books that are awesome too. And I hear that there's even one for kids, a kid's energy bus, which I have yet to read. So I need to put that on my list, but that's my recommendation. So speaking of kids, this is my next tip. And since this is kind of what spurred me into thinking, I need to get, we need to get better at gratitude. We need to like have a more mindful shift around it. Um, I just was reading about a couple things you can do with them. So at bedtime, after they brush their teeth and you're talking them in, a great practice to start would be to ask them one thing that they did today that they're proud of, one thing that they like about themselves. 
and just get them in the habit of that, of celebrating their victories. It's not all about other people sometimes, but it's so important to work on the things they think about themselves and the way they see themselves. And I know I have a couple kids, well, I have one or two, who sometimes it's easy that like they're really hard on themselves. Just like as adults, we can be really hard on ourselves. And those habits and patterns are created as children. And it's a lot easier to fix in little kids than it is in grown-ups who have years and years and years of patterns and habits and experiences to overcome, right? So we're really making it a focus in our house to work on our self-talk, to work on our affirmations. Um, and so I love that idea. One thing that they like about themselves or something that they did that day to help someone else that made them feel proud of themselves. It shouldn't just be about grades or winning or anything like that. It should be, you know, I helped I helped someone tie their shoes or I, I, I was a friend, someone that looked sad. Like, let's celebrate those things. Let's shift their focus and work on improving their self-esteem now before things get hard, before things get complicated even more, okay? So the tip for this tip was to ask your kiddo one thing that they did today that they're proud of or one thing they like about themselves. And then the other side of that is to ask them one thing, one thing that someone did for them and to share appreciation for that. So, you know, my teacher... My teacher was extra kind to me today. Well, then that's awesome. Let's let's shift the focus to that instead of focusing on so-and-so isn't nice on the playground, right? As parents, it's such an amazing gift that we have that we get to shape little humans. It, it's not like we're all sleepwalking through life, just, you know, going from grade to grade to work to whatever. No, we're the drivers of our bus and we get to grow these little minds that's a huge, amazing responsibility. Super awesome. So my friend Carolyn also had a really good suggestion um, when I started talking about gratitude and asking for book suggestions. They have a gratitude jar. And I see this, um, I think I saw this a lot around, around New Year's on Pinterest, where you have like a gratitude jar and people drop, you know, something great that happened to them just randomly in the jar, right? And then on New Year's Eve or Christmas or whenever, you empty the jar and you read all the great memories and things. And I think that's an awesome idea. So if you have any suggestions for me about how you practice gratitude, anything that works for you, I would love to hear about it. If you are gonna go ahead and do a gratitude journal with me, I really wanna hear about that as well. Let me know that you're doing it with me. I got a couple books at the library. I went and asked the librarians. I was like, okay. I want, to, I want to talk to my kids more about um, gratitude. Do you have any book suggestions? So they had a couple, um, but this one was cute. This is called The Thankful Book by Todd Parr. Um, there was a whole bunch of ones around Thanksgiving, so maybe as a culture we need to shift more. Maybe I should write a book. I don't know. Um, but as for adult reads, okay, I forgot how awesome The Secret is. I have not read The Secret, but I read, I listened on audio to The Power of The Secret. Again, you guys, when you were stuck in your car or you're vacuuming, you're a captive audience. I love to listen to personal development. I don't, sometimes it's hard to sit down and read. I get that. But if you're doing something where you, you, I mean, you're stuck, right? Like you're driving your car, you probably aren't supposed to be on the phone or whatever. Listen to something that will grow you. Listen to something that will fill your cup and make you more positive and see things differently because nothing ever magically comes out of your life's vending machine, right? You get to change your life. You get to rock your life. And for me, I am proof that this works. Like I used to be super negative and unhappy and frustrated and stuck. And I realized no one was going to change that for me. A politician wasn't going to change it. My husband wasn't going to help me find happiness. It had to come from inside. And I started changing my mind. I started doing personal development every single day. So The Secret by Rhonda Brines or The Power of the Secret. Um, it can be a little woo-woo. She talks a lot about the law of attraction and stuff like that. Um, but it's a good read, okay? I talked about John Gordon's The Energy Bus, which is freaking awesome. I just got this one at the library. Spirituality of Gratitude, The Unexpected Blessings of Thankfulness by Joshua Kang. I just started that this morning. I also got started this one. It's called the Attitudes of Gratitude. I like this one a little bit better. I'm just now getting into that one. So those are a couple of my suggestions. I want to know if you're going to do this. I want to know if you are a gratitude practicer, practitioner, right? <laughs> you can even meditate in the morning and think of something you're grateful for. But let me know. Let me know if you're doing it, if it's rocking your life. If there's anything you want to hear more about or you want us to chat about next Friday, let me know. I hope you all have a fantastic and amazing weekend. And remember that you're the driver of your bus. So look for the good. Change your change your your mantra if it's not if it's not benefiting you. You get to drive your own bus. You get to change your freaking life. You're not a victim. You're a victor. And you were put here to do amazing, powerful things 
that's your power. No one else is you. So be the very best you you can be. Don't just sleepwalk through life. Stop putting things off for next week or next month or next year or next tax season or whatever it is that you're using as your crutch. Freaking rock today because tomorrow's not promised. All we can do is live the best we can today.